Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of the Bundesliga Career Mode. This is the 30th episode of the series. Already reaching 30 episodes in this series and I want to say thank you so much for your support so far. I said on Twitter yesterday that I am really enjoying this series and it could become one of my favourite series to make ever and I definitely still feel that, you know, 30 episodes in, it's it's been really fun for me to make the episodes in this way. Again, because of the changes you guys asked me to make, background music, speech bubbles, comments getting shown sometimes at the start of the videos, really really feel it so this added the, uh, the the more quality to the the videos I'm making right now in this series and I'm enjoying the team I've got I like the signings I've made just in general I'm really enjoying this series hopefully you guys are as well it's been a lot of fun for me and long may it continue we're only in season two don't forget but still coming to the first game of today's episode here we take on FC Cone in a second versus third clash in the Bundesliga so I was tempted to do a live commentary for this one decided against it though I've done quite a few of those as late and I didn't want to uh, to do too many in quick succession so because of that I thought I'd do a post commentary for it but anyway this is a pretty big game for us in the Bundesliga these sides only separated by goal difference right now as we close out the first half of the season the first shots fell to us but Julian Brandt put the shot into the side netting and then 22nd minute though Timo Werner ran down the left hand side kept on going got a lot of pace Timo Werner drilled across into the centre picked out Julian Brandt who missed our first chance of the game but let's be honest here he wasn't going to miss that one a great run from Timo Werner a fantastic assist picking out the former Bayer Leverkusen man who could not miss from there. He drilled across into the centre. And drill crosses is something I don't tend to do this much this year in FIFA because I used to do them last year all the time. And a few people started complaining, saying they were too easy for me to score. So I decided not to do as many this year. But they're not as effective as they used to be. But for that one, it does go in. And it is Hamburg 1, FC Köln 1. But the away side would get themselves back on level terms in the 36th minute. They went down the right-hand side, cut past, I think it was Jonathan Tarr, and crossed the ball into the centre. A bit of a similar goal, really. A lovely volley, though, by Zola and Cesar Valente. Just like the Köln goalkeeper, Timo Horn had absolutely no chance. So, as you can see, FC Köln back on level terms. Also, a side note, uh, I called him FC Köln, but I've called him FC Cologne before as well. That's because whenever I used to say this team name, FC Köln, people would say it's actually FC Cologne. So, I changed it to FC Cologne, and then people started saying, no, it's, it's FC Köln. I was like, well, which one is it then, Köln or Cologne? So, for the time being, we called him as Köln, as I think that's correct. But uh, still, it's Hamburg 1, FC Köln. Cone at one at the break. You can see Diekmeyer had the final chance to half. The right back shot hit in the post before the away side eventually got the danger clear. But as you can see, though, 15 minutes after the restart, a good chance for us to retake the lead. Angel Correa received the ball down left hand side, took it past our former fullback here, used his pace to beat him, then his skill to cut inside. And after a wonderful piece of dribbling, takes aim and finds the back of the net as well. So just past the hour mark, Angel Correa gets us back in front with yet another goal. I can't remember the last episode I uploaded where Angel Correa did not score at least once. It is just absurd, but the guy is unstoppable. He is on fire right now, and he scores his 12th Bundesliga goal here already. So a nice little goal here by Correa, but Timo Horn will probably be a little bit disappointed about that one. The shot was straight at him, and yes, it had power, and there was a body that sort of came across. May have been obstructed his vision slightly, but I think a goalkeeper of Timo Horn's class should be saving that one. But still, we don't care one bit. It's Hamburg 2, FC Köln 1. We are back back in front of this game and Angel Correa has got yet a, another goal so 2-1 to Hamburg in the 74th minutes then there was denied by a good save by Timo Horn though and it was still 2-1 from the corner was crossing into the centre Jonathan Tarr won the header but couldn't keep it down it went harmlessly over the bar and behind so still 2-1 in this game as we came to the close here as you can see 6 minutes to go Luan found Masuaku down left hand side now French left back skipped past Sorensen played it in towards Correa with a nice little ball roll a brilliant roulette by Correa to beat his man he went for goal once again though Timo Horn made a very good save and turned it behind for a corner so still 2-1 and from the corner is crossing into the centre looking for Stendera it was headed away only as far as Masuaku took aim from range on a half volley it was a good save by Timo Horn then Yannick Gerhardt found the back of the net after Horn's save deflected onto the post then hit the goalkeeper and went in but as you can see the linesman on the far side had his flag up we didn't see a replay for it and the, uh, the graphic gets shown but he was indeed offside and Yannick Gerhardt's goal or I suppose it would have gone down as an own goal from Timo Horn really was chalked off so final score has Hamburg 2, FC Köln 1. We deserved the win though, we played far better. They may have had more possession. We had 11 shots in that game, 5 on target as well. We're really ruthless on offense. Every single time we came forward, we looked like we would score. Of course, had a disallowed goal late on, and Timo Horn made a couple of great saves as well. We do win the game though, very, very happy with that. And we do now go 3 points clear of FC Köln, push them further down in third place. We basically try and show Bayern Munich that we're not giving up. And of course, in the last episode, I discussed it after our goal is draw to 
Borussia Dortmund. Maybe we're not going to be genuine title contenders this year. Maybe Bayern Munich are laughing off our threat. But I don't want to give up. I really do believe that halfway through the season, 17 games played now. Yes, we're still a few points behind the league leaders. And we know Bayern rarely ever slip up. They are yet to lose a league game so far. And there's a good chance they may well go undefeated all season long. I still believe, you know, I still believe I'm trying to stay optimistic. You know, usually I'm a very pessimistic person, believe it or not, guys. You probably know that by now if you've been watching for a while. But I'm trying to stay optimistic. I'm trying to sit here and say, you know what? We're only halfway through the season. There is still a long way to go. And you never know what can happen in career mode. It's, it's a very bizarre game mode. Anything can happen. And I'm trying to stay optimistic. I still believe we can be in this title race and we can push Bayern possibly all the way this year and have a go at claiming our first Bundesliga title since I took over. But still, following that, as you can see, uh, Ashton Gutz had his contract up come the end of the year. He was able to be poached away by other clubs in January on a pre-contract. So we gave him a new deal. He's an academy graduate of Hamburg and he's not really that good of a player, but he's a squad player. He doesn't really complain. So I'm fine with him staying here and just give him a couple of grand extra per week. And also Christian Ruck, one of our youth players, wanted to terminate his contract. We gave him a pro deal. He had some more right potential, but he comes out 51 overall. And I've discussed this a few times now and I'll say it again. I really hope next year EA understand that in order for more people to want to use the Youth Academy feature, they need to make sure that when the players come out of the academy, there's a good chance they come out with decent overalls because with all due respect to Christian Ruck's 51 overall, he's 23 ratings lower than our fourth choice centre-back to buy a Strobel. Now, let's be honest here, he's probably not going to grow 23 ratings in the first couple of seasons. So because of that, it means that he is going to be someone who, well, let's just say doesn't get very much game time if any at all he won't develop very quickly it will take him like five to six years to catch up to that level unless we train him and it just means that like we're we're not going to spend the time developing that guy you know we're not going to spend the time developing a guy who possibly may turn out to have good potential in the future and be really good we're not going to spend our time on that knowing that we could have better players coming in if we just buy them naturally and that's why a lot of people are put off by the youth academy in career mode because it just takes too long to make your players good if they come out of the academy and they're in like mid, or, mid to high 60s that's fine but 51 overall 51 overall maybe in league two but we're in the bundesliga uh, trying to challenge for the title we're not going to be playing him very often so it's it's really frustrating but I just feel as though you know when you get to that level when you get to the level that we're playing at right now in the Bundesliga and we have a really good youth scout which we do I feel as though EA should know that when you pick up a player and he's in your academy if he's got all right potential he should probably have a pretty decent overall as well but that's just me maybe you guys disagree with that line of thinking but I just feel as though you know the youth academy has not been good since FIFA 13 in my eyes and they need to go back to that sort of system where I wouldn't say it was too easy, but it was a lot easier to get really good players. But most importantly, when the players came out of the academy, they were usually, at the very least, in their 60s for overall. And that was good enough, in my eyes, to throw them in the first team and give them some exposure. But still, following that, as you can see, I uh, asked for some money from the board as well. I asked for £3 million. They wouldn't give us the full amount, but they gave us just over £2 million, so we shall take that. And in the January transfer window, as you can see, we're getting quite a few transfer offers, rejecting them, though, mainly, because we didn't want to sell our starters. But we did get a bid here for Andre Silva from Uden for 9.5 million pounds and that's half a million pounds over his valuation we signed this guy in the summer transfer window I've only played him eight times though and he's only scored once that was on his debut against Aberdeen in a qualifier so I said to Udinese give us 16 million pounds and we'll take it I wasn't expecting them to match it but I thought it might come out with like 12 or possibly 13 million pounds if we're lucky and then we could consider it as a big came in for Cesar Valente you hear about this Sevilla coming in and saying we want your goalkeeper 19 million pounds I was like, mate, you got Sergio Rique, develop him instead. Sergio Rique, Sergio Rico, develop him instead. We're keeping Valente and a big coming for Julian Brandt as well. It was from Sheffield Wednesday who had £10 million to offer us and we said no. They give us 22, I think it was 22 million pounds and they said no as you'll see in a minute's time. Not a real surprise. So he's going nowhere. Totally fine with me. But as for Andre Silva, Udinese came back to us and said he would match £16 million and I was like... Oh, well, I did not see that coming. So the Italian side are going to match £16 million for our Portuguese striker. And he looks like he's on his way after just six months of being here. So 
That's fine for me because he is a striker who, again, he's played eight games for us. I haven't used him too much. I haven't needed to, really, because Correa's been on fire. And if you remember, the reason I signed him in the summer transfer window was just in case Correa wasn't on fire. I said that the reason I'm buying two strikers is because if one is misfiring, I'm confident the other one won't. And, of course, Correa's not been misfiring at all. He's been scoring everything. So Andre Silva, unfortunately, has had to sit on the bench week after week thinking, will I get my chance to start tonight? And I have to keep turning in to say, I'm sorry, bruv, but Correa is literally doing nothing to suggest he deserves dropping. So because of that, we're going to sell Andre Silva to Udinese. It's only fair. He'll get more game time there. And that's totally fine with me as well because we get £16 million, make a profit on the guy early. And that, in my opinion, just makes sense because, again, there's nothing wrong with Andre Silva. Again, maybe only one goal in eight games isn't a great start, but haven't really had the time to use him too much. But Correa is just too good to be dropped right now. And therefore, Silva is just, it just isn't going to get used enough. That's just the truth. So because that, we're going to send, uh, send to Udinese, I'm totally fine with that and he does indeed get sold for £16 million. So away goes Andre Silva. Thank you for your service but hopefully you'll have better luck in Italy and you won't have another Argentine striker playing in front of you that is doing far better. So he goes to Udinese, £16 million. Schalke accepted a bit of £11 million for Maximilian Meyer. Now you may be wondering why I was going in for Meyer, and here is the reason why. I don't believe we need another backup striker because of what's going on with Correa right now. I'm putting all my faith in the guy like we did with Valente last season when we sold Rene Adler. Going to put all my faith in Andre, in uh, Angel Correa as Andre Silva gets sold. I'm going to sign Maximilian Meyer, a playmaker, for £11 million. As Lorient said, I'll match a bid of £4 million for Tobias Strobel, our fourth choice centre-back. Going to put a bid of £11 million, sign him for £11 million after he accepts his contract, after Schalke accepted the bid. I'm going to play Julian Brandt on the left side of midfield. Timo Werner will now become our backup striker and drop to the bench, even after that man of the match before against FC Cole there, playing down the left flank. I think Brandt, who does drift out wide quite a bit, will be pretty decent playing in the left midfield role. And I do believe that's where he plays right now for Bayer Leverkusen. Correct me if I'm wrong, though. Or maybe it's the left wing role. Or down the left side, anyway. Correct me if I'm wrong, that's totally fine. But Meyer will come in, playing the attacking midfield role. Timo Werner will drop to the bench. Our side will get a little bit stronger. We get another really good young German talent coming into the Volkspark Stadion. And a question for you guys, was this a good piece of business, yes or no? Because for £5 million pounds in a different we sign Maximilian Meyer and we sell Andre Silva. So Andre Silva goes for £16 million. Meyer comes in for £11 million, which is now £1 million under his valuation. It was a valuation bill when we put it in. I, in my opinion, think that's a really, really good deal right there. But let me know in the comment section down below. What do you guys think of this deal? Was it a good one? Yes or no? But as you can see, Meyer is going to come in. He will play in the attacking midfield role. Julian Brandt will be playing down the left side now from now on. So he's been really effective in the cam role, but... I think down the left side, it'll be just as good. And with Maya playing as the playmaker, I'm pretty confident that will prove to be a really good signing. So our first signing of the January transfer window is made. Maximilian Maya comes in for £11 million. Andre Silva goes for £16 million. And again, let me know in the comment section down below, was that a good deal or will it backfire massively? Good piece of business here, Alan, I think, bringing in Max Maya. Yeah, a little like Mario Götze. He's compatriot. He's a clever player, gets himself forward, loads of energy. And coming into the second game of today's episode here, we will take on Bayer Leverkusen at the Volkspark Stadion. We're in second place. They are in sixth place right now. Of course, last season they finished in fifth place behind us by one place as we finished in fourth place. Uh, right now they've got 26 points. We've got 35 points. This is the first game of the second half of the season. So coming to this one, we want to start this second half right and get off to a really good beginning. So taking on Bayer Leverkusen here. First chance before to us in the 18th minutes, career found Leroy Sane. His shot was well saved by our former goalkeeper, Drobny. But how about this for a start? 18 minutes in. Now, I said Angel Correa was scoring everything. And he's scoring in every kind of way. I think this is the first chest goal I have ever scored in FIFA. And yes, it was unintentional. Sane's shot was saved by Drobny. And as it rebounded straight to Correa, he chested the ball on. And I don't think he was trying to score with it. And I was hammering down circle like a madman. Thinking, why aren't you shooting? Why aren't you shooting? But as he chested the ball on the wet turf, it skidded off the surface and trickled past Drobny, who was on the floor. He couldn't recover on time and get back. And watch Maximilian Meyer jump in the air, pushing forward. And Correa, the confidence of the guy, before the ball's even crossed the line, starts to do the celebration as he can celebrate his 13th goal in the Bundesliga this season. So Hamburg won by Leverkusen nil. And Correa, I mean, I'm running out of words to describe the guy. The confidence is just unreal. He is just 
just an amazing striker and he scores once again. So Hamburg won by Leverkusen nil. Hakan Chalunolu against his former club almost scored a nice goal himself there to try and equalise. But he dragged his shot just wide of the post of mine for a goal kick. Then Drobny made a good save there to prevent us from going 2-0 up. And then on the stroke at half time mark here as you can see we're in added time. Four and a half minutes in so only two minutes apparently supposed to be added on here in the 45th minute. We won ourselves a free kick. It was the final chance of the half. I thought I may as well send Cesar Valente forward for it. So we can swing it into the centre. 45 yards out. Curls it into the box. And wouldn't you just know it. Yannick Gerhardt wins the header. Scores his first of the season. And Cesar Valente gets his first career assist. So right now from penalties. He's four from four from the spot. But he's yet to score a free kick goal. He's came close a couple of times. But for this one he was way too far out. He wasn't going to score from 45 yards. So I thought I'll float it into the centre. See if I can pick out a teammate. Yannick Gerhardt rises highest, wins the header, it loops over our former goalkeeper Drobny and he runs up the pitch to celebrate with Cesar Valencia, or down the pitch if you will, going back to the halfway line to celebrate the goalkeeper as he gets his first career assist and Gerhardt gets his first goal of the season. So Hamburg 2, Bayer Leverkusen 0 and I'm just delighted with that. What a fantastic first half, a chest goal, an assist for Valencia, everything was going according to plan. So 2 it up going to the second half and 20 minutes after the restart here, Bayer tried to get themselves back in the game, but Valencia made a great double save and kept it at 2-0. I was thinking, how can I make this performance even more perfect? Well, this is how we can do it. Masawaku's cross, Maximilian Meyer's header, and in the 69th minute, Hamburg free by Leverkusen nil, and a debut goal for the boy kicking the corner flag as he makes it 3-0 to Hamburg. The perfect result, Maximilian Meyer, the new guy, for £11 million, scoring on his debut. Masawaku with a nice cross into the centre, floating it in, but that is just static defending from Bayer Leverkusen. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm pleased to see Meyer score his first goal on his debut, but where was the defending there? How 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 static were they? I mean, static is the right word. They just stood there and allowed Meyer to have the header and put it into the bottom corner. So 3-0. It would have been 4-0 here, 12 minutes before the end, but Jordi made a great save to deny Correa at the far post and kept it at 3-0. But it was how the game would finish, though. Final score, Hamburg 3, Bayer Leverkusen 0. And what a fantastic performance. A really, really great game. And we've had some great games this season. The 4-0 over Borussia which and Gladbach was obviously probably our best result of the season so far. It was on the opening day as well. It was to beat Freiburg by four goals to nil as well. But this result is definitely up there too. What a fantastic win. Three goals to nil. Everything went according to plan. Another clean sheet for Valente. He got his first career assist. Maya scored on his debut and Correa scored with his chest. What a great game. And Maya, my man of the match on his debut for a goal and an assist as well. And I do believe that piece of business to sell Andre Silva and bring in Maximilian Maya will be the right decision. But as always, guys, a big thank you for watching the video. Really do hope you have enjoyed it. If you enjoyed today's episode of the Bundesliga career mode, please do consider leaving a like. That's of course much appreciated. It really helps the channel grow as well. You don't have to leave a like if you don't want to. Much love to you all, and I'll see you for the next episode of the Bundesliga career mode very soon.